thank you very much for coming to my lecture recital on Sibelius songs. In 2009, I was introduced to Sibelius songs for the first time during my tenure at Sibelius Academy, Helsinki, Finland, as an exchange student. I remember how I was struck by the fact that Sibelius was actually a prolific song composer and I had not known any of his songs. I hope that today's lecture recital will be a good introduction of his songs to you, especially for those who are not familiar with his song literature. John Sibelius was born in 1865 into a Finland-Swedish family in Hemelina, in the Russian Grand Duchy of Finland. His father died when Sibelius was only two years old and left substantial debts. He grew up at a time when Finland was fighting for independence from Russia. Sibelius' family consciously decided to send Sibelius to an important Finnish language school as part of the larger rise of Romantic nationalism in Finland. Romantic nationalism became a vital element in his artistic output and political leanings later on. Sibelius did not start formal piano lesson until he was nine. He became very famous as a violinist at the age of 15. However, he abandoned his aspirations with violin as he developed his interest in compositions. Sibelius joined the law school at Imperial Alexander University of Finland in 1885. However, he soon quit studies to pursue his interest in music. John Sibelius married Aino Yenefeld and fathered six daughters. The Sibelius family moved to their new home called Ainola, named after his wife Aino, on Lake Tusula Yervempa in 1904. He adored nature, especially Finnish landscapes, and composed many pieces inspired by nature's beauty. His best known compositions include Finlandia, the Violin Concerto, and Seven Symphonies. He is considered as the last master in the grand Beethoven symphonic tra tradition. Sibelius composed prolifically until the mid-1920s, and the Seventh Symphony is the pinnacle of his orchestra compositions. After completing his Seventh Symphony, he failed to produce any major works in his last 30 years. And this sharp decline during his last 30 years is often referred as the silence of Yervin Pa. He believed that he wouldn't be able to compose a symphony better than did the seventh one. For several years, he worked on an eighth symphony secretively, but he destroyed the manuscripts of his work. He was influenced by Busoni and Tchaikovsky. Sibelius developed a technique called a pedal point, which is a long sustained note underneath a simple harmonization for his orchestral works. Sibelius died of a brain hemorrhage at the age of 91 at his house Ainola in 1957. Still today, Sibelius is a Finnish national icon. 94 songs out of 100 Sibelius songs are composed in Swedish language. However, this raises our eyebrows because Sibelius is known to us as the Finnish nationalist composer. There are a few important history facts to learn in order to answer this question about the majority of Sibelius songs being written in Swedish. Finland belonged to Sweden for six centuries. Then Alexander I Emperor of Russia defeated the Swedish troops in Finland in 1808 and declared Finland as an autonomous Grand Duchy of Russia. The Finnish language and a national awakening were developed under the Russian emperors as part of a colonial plan. Alexander II especially encouraged 
Finns to find their national identity and the nation thrived under his throne. Even after Finland became Russia's Grand Duchy, there was a small group of immigrants who remained in Finland as an upper class. Ironically, these Swedish upper class people in Finland were the ones who developed the Finnish language, identity, and a national awakening. Before 1863, only a couple of years before Sibelius was born, S Swedish was the sole language used in administration, public institutions, education, and cultural life in Finland. In 1863, Finnish gained an official position in administration. However, it took another 30 years for it to be seen as equal to the official status of Swedish. Sibelius' family was Swedish-speaking upper class in Finland. Sibelius grew up speaking Swedish at home, and Swedish was his primary language throughout his life. Because the Swedish upper class in Finland laid the foundations of Finnish identity, the majority of the Finnish nationalist literatures were written in Swedish. Swedish speakers were a minority in Finland, but their influence was great. Kinborg, a celebrated Finnish base, explained in his article that Swedish was better established than Finnish as a literary form around Sibelius' time. Despite the fact that Sibelius was a prolific song composer and his songs deserve an international reputation, his songs have hardly been performed outside of Scandinavian countries. His songs were completely overshadowed by his orchestra works. Sibelius' songs still remained veiled in mystery, primarily because of the Swedish text used to create them. Sibelius developed his own idioms for his song writings, which may sound unconventional to an audience who is accustomed to German lieder or French melodies. For songs by composers like Debussy, Faure, um, Wolf, or Brahms, words dominate over the resulting music. However, Sibelius absorbed an over-impression of a given poem and expressed a broad atmosphere by employing repeated motifs and broad, um, uh, broad musical structures. Sibelius' characteristic vocal writing originated from his orchestra composition style, especially that of his tone poems. The vast idea of a program creates an overexpression throughout music without focusing on the importance of individual words in a poem. Valerie Siren in the Sibelius Companion describes Sibelius' unique vocal writing. Quote, in contrast to the usual techniques of word painting and musical coloring of feeling, Sibelius' songs are plastic. The words vocal line, and piano part fused to create a single impression. The relationship of the poem to the music in Sibelius songs is quite different from the songs of other composers. Like his orchestra tone poems, the, tone pro, uh, the, the poem provides a program rather than verses to be spoken." End quote. According to Sandri Leves, Sibelius' longtime secretary, Sibelius himself said, quote, My songs can also be sung without words. They are not so dependent on words as the songs of many other composers. End quote. In some sense, Sibelius' vocal writing reminds listeners of Beethoven's. Both men were renowned symphonic composers but they were not very sympathetic to human voices when they, when they wrote the songs. Kimborg further explained in his article, quote, singers very often shake their heads at composers who do not seem to be aware of the limitations of the human voice. 
It is also quite possible that the composer's unorthodox writing horrifies many orthodox souls, especially in the German-speaking world." End quote. Sibelius and Beethoven shared a common interest in vocal writing, using wide vocal range, angular vocal lines, bold intervals, and instrumental vocal writing. This compositional style intensifies the drama and emphasizes the conflict with full force. However, Sibelius' writing style seemed to work more cohesively on a bigger canvas, such as symphonies rather than songs. Later in the program, I will compare Beethoven's The Ere Gotes Ausia Natur from Six Sacred Songs and Sibelius' Arioso. Sibelius was closely associated with Finnish, Finland's Swedish-speaking nobility and upper-class poets, many of which were active in the nationalist movement. Today, I'd like to pay special attention to Johann Ludwig Rundberg. Rundberg was a patriotic poet who wrote the tales of Ensign Stahl in Swedish. This book particularly constructed a Finnish identity and defined the lives of the Finns. In Finland, the people pay him much respect with statues, a museum, and a day in his honor. He wrote about the nature, the religion, and the patriotism in a highly romantic style. His poems were short lines, simple words, and easy forms, which made his poems perfectly suitable for songs. Throughout his life, Sibelius was under his Rundberg's strong influence for his composition, especially his songs. Both Sibelius and Rundberg wrote their works in Swedish and um, identified themselves as Finns. Together with the works of Rundberg, Sibelius' music is synonymous with Finnish national identity. For the second part of the lecture recital, I would like to present six representative Sibelius songs, and I will meet you on stage in a bit.